The assertion that the U.S. operates clandestine biolabs around the world, particularly in Africa, conducting heinous experiments is frequently met with skepticism and dismissed as mere rumors. This skepticism stems from the United States' meticulously crafted narrative, which portrays such labs, which house unethical experimentation and bioweapon development, as solely belonging to the realm of fiction, existing only in cinematic portrayals. This deliberate framing by the U.S. government has resulted in widespread public skepticism when confronted with reports of these alleged facilities and their activities. The lack of concrete evidence or official recognition, combined with the U.S. narrative, contributes to the perception that such claims are improbable or fabricated. This skepticism contributes to the perception that any news about secretive biolabs operating under the radar of governments, particularly in Africa, is regarded as unsubstantiated rumors rather than potential realities, allowing skepticism to overshadow serious considerations of such claims. But it becomes disturbing to know that these biolabs are a reality. What is done in these biolabs? And why does the United States not want the world to know about them? Let's know about everything in this video. TR Media investigates worldwide disruptive frontiers and transformative initiatives. Whether you're a new viewer or looking for insights into the ever-changing landscape of innovation and global impact, our content provides a deep dive into the most recent breakthroughs and their transformative effects around the world. The global dispersion of over 400 U.S. biological laboratories, including approximately 30 in Africa, raises serious concerns. These facilities, which conduct classified experiments, have raised questions about the true motivations behind the extensive network of labs, particularly in light of previous outbreaks linked to lab research. Initially established to combat diseases such as AIDS and malaria, the number of these labs has grown significantly over the years. Recent controversies involving U.S.-run laboratories in Ukraine have fueled suspicions. Despite U.S. denials, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s revelations and subsequent U.S. government admissions about running such labs contradict their earlier claims. These events call into question the credibility of the United States' statements about its global biolab presence and activities. According to Dr. Nilella Breakfast of Nelson Mandela University, the United States may be leveraging its biological research in Africa to increase its influence on the continent. These revelations and ongoing suspicions call into question the U.S. narratives about the purpose and scope of its global biolab operations. According to Dr. Nilella Breakfast, U.S. military bases in Africa may be linked to these biolabs, sparking debates about the removal of foreign bases on the continent. Russia's report on U.S. labs in Africa suggests that conducting experiments on local populations is simple and inexpensive raising concerns about the labs posing a threat rather than merely combating diseases. Given the potentially disastrous consequences if dangerous agents escape from these labs, previous incidents have linked outbreaks to nearby U.S. lab locations, fueling concerns about engineered diseases being tested in Africa. Intriguingly, infection expert Dr. Cyril Brooks reports implicated U.S. labs in the creation and spread of pathogens such as the Ebola virus and proposed genetic modifications of viruses as potential bioweapons. Despite U.S. denials, revelations about covert labs funded by influential foundations such as George Soros and Bill and Melinda Gates call the narrative into question. During the Ebola crisis, ethical concerns arose with unauthorized blood sample collection and questionable practices benefiting European and American pharmaceutical companies. This unethical scenario also involved the commercial availability of an Ebola-infected Ghanaian woman's blood, raising alarming concerns about data privacy and exploitation. Revelations about lucrative bioresearch operations in Africa, which are worth far more than gold, highlight profit-driven motives and ethical violations, particularly in the collection of blood without consent and without compensation. These findings call into question the U.S.'s stated goal of protecting local populations, especially given that access to biological materials collected remains restricted for African scientists. Despite previous commitments to end offensive bioweapons programs, reports indicate ongoing bioexperimentation and weaponization, raising international concern 
and calling into question the U.S. compliance with treaties prohibiting biological warfare. The U.S. biological warfare program can be traced back to post-World War Irisan experiments. It gained traction in 1941 with the establishment of the War Bureau of Consultants and was authorized by President Roosevelt in 1942, resulting in the establishment of U.S. Army Biological Labs at Fort Detrick in Maryland. This cover initiative advanced throughout the Cold War, with research centered at Camp Detrick and production sites like Pine Bluff Arsenal and Dugway Proving Ground expanding the U.S.'s global biological warfare capabilities. During the Kennedy-Johnson administration, Project 112 was launched in 1961, involving covert field testing of biological weapons using simulants and agents dispersed across large areas. Operation Sea Spray, which released bacteria in the San Francisco Bay Area in 1950, raised concerns among scientists about the security risks associated with the U.S.'s biological weapons programs. During the Vietnam War, public scrutiny increased due to the use of chemicals such as Agent Orange and controversial human research programs, prompting international criticism and public outcry against these open-air experiments. President Nixon ostensibly ended the United States Biological Warfare Program in 1972 when he signed the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention, renouncing the country's involvement in biological weapons. Recent reports, Russia's accusations, and the U.S. admitting to having biolabs in Ukraine all suggest that the U.S. secretly continued its program even after Nixon's public renunciation. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the impact of viruses on global stability and the global economy, prompting an examination of various biological research organizations, particularly American facilities, working on a COVID-19 vaccine. However, criticisms have arisen as a result of perceived transparency issues, as these U.S.-funded labs in Eastern Europe, Central Asia, and Africa operate covertly, raising concerns about their proliferation, locations, and potential role in epidemic outbreaks in specific African regions. Dr. Cyril Broderick, an infection and microbiological disease expert, claimed that American biological laboratories in Africa were linked to epidemic outbreaks, implying that Ebola and AIDS were genetically modified organisms created by North American military organizations for testing in Africa. Reports from alternative media outlets highlighted emergency situations in Sierra Leone's Kenema City State Hospital, where an American-funded laboratory operated during an Ebola outbreak, raising concerns about the potential threat posed by such labs. The challenge is to demonstrate the involvement of American foundations in the event of a system failure and the disastrous consequences if a biological weapon accidentally escapes control resulting in mass casualties. These African laboratories perform a wide range of tasks involving the study and classification of dangerous pathogens such as viruses, bacteria, fungi, and other diseases. Under Pentagon supervision, the laboratories research and handle these pathogens, develop vaccines, and conduct tests, all while working closely with local African authorities for disease detection and outbreak investigations. They collect materials, DNA, and information from local populations and channel this data to the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, DTRA, forming an important part of the U.S. defense system against biological threats. DTRA operates in a number of countries around the world, establishing medical facilities and funding activities while operating outside of congressional oversight. These labs, which are under the control of the Pentagon, are spread across several countries, including Uganda, and are managed by private contractors such as CH2 and Hill, who have significant autonomy. While the Biological Weapons Convention requires annual information sharing on Pentagon programs, these regulations exempt private contractors and other government agencies from oversight, allowing for covert operations and biological research in places such as Africa. The continent's extensive medical research centers, which are linked to U.S. government structures, highlight Uganda's strong interest in American activities. A comprehensive collaboration between Uganda's government and Washington emerges through a network of medical research centers, institutes, schools, and biolabs, many of which were established by the U.S. These interconnected entities, which include prison laboratories, 
reveal a pattern of American influence. Notably, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, DTRA, maintains a lab in Aruba City, close to a U.S.-backed city prison, raising concerns about potential research involving dangerous infections involving prisoners. Furthermore, the Pentagon-funded biological facility in Namulonga, which is overseen by the National Institute of Animal Husbandry, focuses on detecting diseases such as murin, brucellosis, and anthrax in a civilian setting, raising concerns due to undisclosed animal experiments and stringent security measures. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned. You.